So we'll talk about uh, some of the synthesis uh, methods commonly used uh, to make ceramic powder material. Okay, one of them is called uh, mechanochemical synthesis. To synthesize means essentially to make the material from some starting material. Quite often, that's uh, involve it involves a change of chemistry. Okay. The first one, mechanochemical, means that maybe some mechanical interaction in that process. Essentially, what is it? It's using, read to yourself, high energy, quite often ball milling, that enhance chemical reactivity for synthesizing compounds of powder form. So here I'm showing an image for a apparatus or device that people use quite often use for life scale uh, mechanochemical synthesis called uh, Spex mill. It's a milling machine, still you use what? Milling ball, you put the powder into a container, the jar, close it and secure it here and it essentially shake it uh, the hell of it. And during this shaking, due to the high energy impacting, the different material may have chemical reaction. That's essentially it. Pretty simple, pretty straightforward, no involvement of solvent, right? And uh, powder in quite often, powder out. And uh, the time depending on the material. Other names, mechanical alloy. Read to yourself, mechanical alloy, which means Two different metals coming together to become a alloy, multi-component metal, mechanical, but it's through a mechanical process. You're not melting it, mechanical. The other one called the mechanical driven synthesis. Pretty much the same thing. Okay. And the advantage, simple, right? For those who are afraid of chemistry, this looks pretty simple. I just put powder in, powder out, ball, that's it, shake. Either with adjustment of composition and stoichiometry. Make sense? If I want to change the alloy composition, I just change the powder, starting powder composition a little bit. That, that's it. Pretty simple. Disadvantage. Every advantage quite often comes with disadvantage. Impurity, right? You are shaking and during this process, who knows what contamination you are wearing off from the ball or from the container. Long process for some. You may have to mill hours, days or several days to do this. So it can be slow, depends. And it's sometimes hard to control. That's the important part. Control what? Control chemistry purity, control particle size, shape. Can you really control how the shape is of the particle when you do this? You imagine, right? It's pretty random process. How do I control the shape of my particle? Not well, not well. Okay? low productivity. As you see, this is a lab skills setup. How do we scale it up in industry? Not too much. This is pretty lab skill stuff, but quick. Okay, formation mechanism not very clear. That's from scientific point of view. Quite often you do not exactly know what is happening because it's difficult to capture. It's difficult for me to probe when it shakes. Happens. Make sense? So the mechanism, the, how does the reaction happen? Not very clear. Equipment use, spikes mill, or sometimes planetary mill that we showed, okay? Reaction may be, read to yourself, self-propagating means what? It starts by yourself and uh, expand by yourself. I do not have to apply external heater or do something. It just goes, okay, self-propagating. Very fast when can be very fast when using elements. Okay, and I ask one question: How to get the uh, conium? This is read as the conium diboride, the conium diboride, or the conium boron too, right? But we call it the conium diboride. Di means two. Diboride. Boride means is a boron compound. Make sense? That's our nomenclature. How to make the conium diboride by mechanical alloy? Well, it's pretty simple. How do you do it? You start with mechanical alloy. I have to have something different, right? One could be the conium, the other could be 
boron. Make sense? Mechanical alloy. Okay. So this is what we got. To make the conium diboride, if starting material are the conium metal powder, right? We can get metal powder. And also boron. We don't call boron metal, it's a metalloid or semi-metal. Boron powder. What is the chemical reaction? You're a chemist, can you try to write down the chemical reaction? Okay. Do it yourself and I'm gonna show it on the screen. If you are starting from the conium metal and the boron powder, how do you make the conium diboride? Write down the chemical reaction. I said material scientist, material engineer, you cannot hate chemistry. At least you are going to deal with some chemistry. Okay? So I write, when you write chemical reaction, this is go back to review your high school chemistry. You always have to make sure balance of what? Mass and species, right? The balance of mass, which means on the left side, how many is the conia? On the right side, it should also have how many is the conia? On the left, how many boron? On the right, should also be how many boron? Balance of mass and species. Species could be, look at what I write, atoms. The species could also balance of iron, if there's uh, iron involved. Could also be molecules could also be electrical charges. The charge have to be balanced, right? This. So I write it something like this. Any problem with this? Any problem with what I write? Yes, it's not balanced in terms of mass, right? Or in terms of the number of what elements? Which elements are not balanced here? Boron, okay, very good. So. You have to make it a balance, right? I apologize if I'm insulting your intelligence, but we are reviewing basic chemistry. Okay, now we are balanced. Mass, left side, one zirconium, right side, one zirconium. Two boron on the left side, two boron on the right side. Totally neutral, zero charge on the left side, totally zero charge on the right side. Everything balanced, right? Good. Now the question. Go back to high school chemistry. To make one molar, one mole of zirconium diboride, assuming no loss in handling, this is assumption, simplification, assuming no loss in, in handling, when you bombing, whatever. How much zirconium metal powder and the boron powder in gram will be needed if you are gonna make one mole of zirconium diboride? And what is the final product weight? Yeah, this is your middle school chemistry. But quite often that's what we need. You cannot forget about your middle school chemistry when you do material science or material engineering. Knowing, I know these. Okay, for zirconium, atomic number Z, that means what? The number of so-called proton in the nucleus is 14 or the number 40 element. Atomic mass, still remember this concept? Okay, that's 91.224 AMU, atomic mass unit, or so-called, we can read it another way, 91.224 gram per mole. Read it to yourself. Then for boron, similar, Z equals five, means it's a number five elements on the well. Periodical table, number five, it has five protons in its nucleus. And then the atomic mass is 10.81 AMU, or gram per mole. Okay, so based on this, can you do it? In principle, okay, let's do it together. This is, again, our so-called chemical reaction. It's balanced by mass charge, right? And then don't forget the two here, make sense? And then, in terms of molar quantity, how much do I of the product do I want? One mole of the conium diboride on the right side. Then, how much in mole of the conium metal do I want? Still one mole, right? Based on here, it's one mole. How much boron do we need? Two moles. Excellent. Two moles. Okay. 
So based on this, molar quantity, one, two, one, and based on this, now go back, mass or weight. Some people use mass, some people call it weight. Okay. How much the conium in gram do we need? Okay. Make sense? One mole, one mole times this guy, not this footing. That's atomic number. That's the position is on the periodical table. That's how many proton in there, but that, that's not its mass. This one, gram per mole times one mole, which means for the conium, 91.2 gram. I'm not writing all that stuff because just for approximate. Make sense? And also, it's difficult if you have a balance. If you want to weigh 100 gram, it's difficult to reach all the way to here. Make sense? Just think of the relative accuracy is difficult. Similarly, for boron, 10.8 gram or not? I have the time two, right? Excellent. Times two, which is 21.6 gram. Okay. And then how much product will I get? Yes, because I'm not losing any stain, right? Balance or mass. 112.8. Actually, this number would also be the so called molecular weight or formula weight for the conium diboride. Repeat with me molecular weight or formula weight? Formula weight, because it's for this formula. Molecular weight, that's quite often for small molecule, people say it. For chemistry, we say formula weight. Okay, for crystal. Now, again, check mass. 91.2 plus 10.8 times 2 should equal to this one. And you can go to website and check the conium diboride formula weight of molecular weight. It should be this number. Make sense? Simple chemistry. Don't forget it. And that's important when you start to do so-called synthesis. Any synthesis, quite often. Not to make a graphene. Graphene quite often doesn't involve this. But any other chemistry would involve. Make sense? I'll continue a little bit. Mechanical alloy synthesis. I give you a different example. We now we try to make what? This thing, a carbide, a metal carbide. What types of metal? It has hafnium and a tantalum. And hafnium we have 0.2 there. Tantalum have 0.8. If we are going to make using this so-called mechanical chemical synthesis, there are different ways. I can start with metal and carbon. But in here, one group of researchers, they start with something else. They start with what? Pure tantalum carbide and the pure hafnium carbide. Okay, now I write this equation. Is this correct? Not correct. What is not balanced? the proportion of the mass, right? On the left side, I have how much hafnium? 0.2. If I am talking about one molar, 0.8. Here I have one, it's not balanced. So I have to add back 0.8 tantalum, 0.2 hafnium. And the totally, on the right side, how much carbon do I have on the right side? one right on the left side it's 0.8 plus 0.2 still one now i'm balanced this is one way to write it another way is i would I, you say i do not like fractional decimal place i can do what both sides i can multiply of oh, five right <laughs> five yeah but ten i would have more five makes sense that's the formal equation but at least it shows you how to balance. Okay, so this is what they got in experiment. They start zero hour mechanical chemical alloy. In zero hour, they have the peaks for what? The triangle for hafnium carbide, the circles for tantalum carbide. Clearly, at zero hour, before you mill it, it's how many material? Two material. You may not be too familiar. You probably are studying it. X-ray diffraction. But as you mill it for longer, longer, 
and longer. One hour, six hour, and eighteen hours. You see what? The peaks start to come together, right? Two peaks, two sharp peaks. Now getting much smaller and getting coming together. This is what we call mechanical chemical alloy. And the powder before milling looks like this. Particles, one micron, two micron. Make sense? And then after milling, the particles become what? Well, of course, still powder, but uh, become finer, right? You see individual small stuff become some micron. Make sense? Okay. So I guess let's stop here.